What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be reacting to the top 10 best clutches in competitive Fortnite history. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. Throughout Fortnite history, we've seen many insane clutches, some of which resulted in players earning hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is true, because I've watched a bunch of Fortnite tournaments and uh, seen a bunch of people win money. So uh, if you're a pro Fortnite player who you think you can win a bunch of money, then try. So off of them. So today, we're going to take a detailed look at the top 10 best clutches in Fortnite competitive history. Coming in at number 10 is Benji's insane dream hat clutch. Oh my god, Benji is insane. I want to see what this is. During the finals of one of the solo DreamHack events, Benji was performing quite badly and found himself towards the bottom of the leaderboard. So when it came time to the second to last game, nobody would have guessed that he was about to make a play that would be a highlight in his career. Right now, he's at 100 plus. Oh my he's god. at 115, and he's not done yet. He has Chuck Splash's minis and big pots, and then gold spaz and a gold AR. He's in such a good no spot. He's gonna get another one. That's gonna be rotary. Benji is going insane. Oh my god. Benji's gonna get one more. What is happening? That is insane. What? He is on an absolute running rampage. Three builds, pump from high ground, drops to low, blocks it off. Another one. My God, Benji, the belt is oh. back. The 180 degrees, no, 360. That's total carnage. Benji Fishy, nine eliminations. The God Run, the curse broken. Oh. 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 200 pump, low ground, domination. Darrow's taken out. The next one. Benji blocks it. Does he get the one pump? It's blocked. He's there for the next. Benji. Now that clip from Benji ended up burning him around a thousand. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, Benji. He may not have won that, but Bro went on a rampage. The commentating, though, that that was WWE esque. WWE commentating is better, though. Don't, don't you dare judge me. Let me have my own opinions. Oops. But this next one ended up earning the player over 50,000. And that. 50,000? It's Mr. Savage's World Cup Shadow Bomb play. Mr. Savage has been one of Fortnite's. I've heard of Mr. Savage. Apparently, he's like insane. Smartest players for years now, and this iconic clip helped him get this title. But what not many people remember about this moment is that it actually qualified him for the World Cup finals. Going into this game, he needed to drop a pretty high kill win to have a chance at making it. So when it came down to the final moments, he needed this win. An 18 rocket grenade launcher, but, but now that is the shot is the person who yeah. can make it work. He is so innovative. What? And he takes out neutrons is what I was talking about. No that way. matters to Aqua. Back now, top four. Folks, you might be witnessing why, why Mr. Savage qualifies this week for a trip to the World Cup Finals in New York. An idiot, Mr. Savage M. Building on a 22 build for meeting. The spray comes in a 72 tag, another elimination. Now Kato limits this game. They've got to go off the side of a mountain, and it's shadow bomb time. Look at how awkward this is. He's getting completely blocked that out. He's deciding to take the damage. Yes, Mr. Savage! Oh, oh, oh my god! god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Whoa! So what's he done? He's basically just killed like two people and then used the shadow bomb to to go up the mountain and now whatever that guy is, I don't know his name. I'm sorry whoever that is if you're watching you know, you probably aren't. But yeah. Yeah, Mr. Savage literally went up the mountain and now he's stuck. So now it's like an insane like clutch and like I I I, I can't comprehend. That was just smart. That's why they say, the commentator said he's one of the smartest. Oh my god, that was class. Shadow bomb use I've ever seen! Number 8 is Yandy's solo clutch. This is our first of a couple FNCS reboot round wins. During the Chapter 2 Season 7 FNCS semifinals, Yandy's trio ended up getting contested, so they weren't able to place highly enough to make the grand finals. However, they did manage to get 13th, which meant that they barely qualified to compete in the reboot round where only one team who wins makes it into the grand finals. They eventually made their way into the endgame and found themselves on height, a dominant position. 
But when Sean VT and Chashi went down, it was up to Ziandi to pull off a clutch of a lifetime. And it is Chashi at height alongside with Ziandi who won a cash. Come on, I got broke up! What a huge job! So many people, and it is to play well with Apex's Chrissy. Number six now has a deep dive into his heels to maybe stay alive. Up the second chop, and he lands. Thurstick is still looking forward, and he finally spots him. Bro went to like one HP and then somehow survived. The storm, he's up all oh. the time and there's nothing. It's run out, hitting up the feed, and one loss has been eliminated. Legend has been eliminated. Snag has been eliminated. But Andy, can he do the solo clutch? We've already seen some insane clutches here for the reboot rounds. This will be one of the best of all time. Is he able to hold down? He gets elimination already, but he loses his advantage. But he gets a knock on Steelix here. He's gonna have to hold on now. People shooting on the backside. He's gonna do another. He doesn't see him. Oh my goodness, Shiloh! He's gonna get the siphon and he has six cabbages. Might just be enough, Andy. The solo man, Ruin took height. He just went all the way towards the top, clutched it with a sneaky play at the end. They've won! Oh my god. So he went to like 1 HP and killed eight people. Probably not, but like more. Like, as in, like, I don't know, like five, I guess. And then had to survive in the storm and won it. That's just ice cold. The first game of reboot round! Number seven, Peterbot semi-final solo win. Now, I was debating on whether to put this higher up on the list since this clutch was pretty insane. But I think the rest of them are just a little bit better. This win happened during the Chapter 3 Season 1 FNCS semifinals, where duos had only five games to either win one game or come within the top six most consistent teams to make it to the Grands. Going into the very last game, it was looking really bad for Peter Bond and Quanti. There was pretty much no way they would be able to qualify off of consistency. They needed to win. But Quanti ended up going down before the moving zones even started, so all hopes seem lost. But this is Peter Bot we're talking about, one of the most skilled fraggers in the entire game. What? Nice shot. Whoa! Nice shot. Wow, you're crazy, bro. Peter Bot has a chance here. It's all gonna come down to these healings right here. He might. No way. He might actually find this one right here. He's got cold in his sights. He's looking up for high ground. Can he actually win this? Doesn't realize Spirit Bone crew were there with the flip shot. What's he even there? Oh my gosh. Peter Bot. No. No. That. Okay. Bro just clutched up. Perfect. He had nothing to do and he built and that's like the smartest thing um, you could do. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to accept defeat. But he built and surrounded and then killed and then massacred. And you get the point. Hey! Cold works Peter Bot here for the sixth place position. Peter Bot comes all the way down. Oh. He shuts down Tabby. He gets his... Oh my wanna... god. Nah, dude. Oh, how did he not die? He went down a lot of HP there and then somehow crushed up. Just no comment. That's just insane. Oh my god! I'm so good! Oh my god! No, open, no offense to Peter Bob, but that voice. Oh my god, no, seriously, no offense. Oh my god, bro. Number six, a Wrigley solo clutch. This one is extremely similar to Z Andy's, but the difference is that it was way more insane. This happened in the chapter two, season seven, FNCS reboot round. And they ended up making it there in the first place by just barely finishing in 14th out of the top 17 trios that made it in the semifinals. They were looking pretty good throughout the end game, but later on in the moving zones, k and Dictating would get caught out and go down. So with barely any HP, it was time for Wrigley to make the craziest play of his career. Wrigley, no one's talking about my body, right behind you. Do you have cabbages too? You have my kids on Dictate's body. No, he's dead. I mean, he's not going to die, but like, if, if I was in that situation, I'm dead. Nice. 
you like playing games on your phone and earning gift cards, then you need to download Misplay right now. Spread the mixture evenly on a silicone baking sheet. Bake it in the oven for 20 Adverts are so annoying. You just hit one of the best clutches in Fortnite living history. That was sick. It's not even finished yet. I don't think he's gonna have charges. Two goals, two goals. Let's go! Bruh. Number five, a Sprite solo clutch. A lot of people would say this is the best clutch in this game's history, and rightfully so. This occurred all the way back in Chapter 2, Season 6 of FNCS. Sprite, Gabe, and Tahi were battling it out at Sweaty Sands with Clicks, Buka, and Bizzle for this entire season. Neither team wanted to leave, and it seemed like they were just griefing each other this entire time. So when they both made it to the semifinals, everyone thought that both of these teams' seasons were over. But somehow, Sprite's trio was able to play 17th. Now, this was extremely close because the trios that play 7th to 17th would compete in that reboot round. Where, as you all know, they had one chance to win. And if they did, they'd make the grand finals. But later on in the endgame, Gabe and Tahi would go down. It was looking like a miracle run was over. But Sprite thought otherwise. Oh, we need to get The music hits really hard. Mr. Savage is one of Fortnite's. No! <laughs> Number four, Hen. Bruh! It's a solo grand win. This clutch, hands down, has to be the most impressive showing from a player ever. During the Chapter 3 Season 1 FNCS Grand Finals, Queezy and Hen were in first place for the majority of the tournament. But going into the last game, nothing was set in stone. If they ended up performing poorly, there were still multiple teams that could easily overtake them. And when Queezy ended up going down early on, it was all up for Hen to solidify the FNCS Championship. Hen's done so well to stay alive. He's done everything he possibly can, and he won't stop here. Dealing damage, applying pressure like he has a team by his side. Six teams, six players, it's a solos effort, yes, basically. And Hen is going for high ground. 1v1, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, up against Bubak. One edit, he's got no shield. Hen needs to win this. He has control. This is a solo clutch of your career, my friend. And you're about to win the effort, yes, if you hold on. No maps, one armored wall. This is all he has left. This is literally a life or death situation, and it is sick. Hen has everything. He's done everything. He's sold a clutch. We know he has that ability. No materials left, but he still is able to apply damage. Won't get that elimination, but he will hold on. Starts to spray one more person in his way to sit those out of the ground. All it has to do is wait. The drop down, the beam. It's almost enough. Hen has it. 1v1, 297 points. This is for the European Championship. All he has to do is take down walks, solidify it. He has enough points already. The do it in style, my friend. The VR is just in your ground. Hen as a solo against the world, and he wins the European FNCS. Bro, that was nah.
Number three, Mongrels to HP Clutch to qualify for the World Cup Finals. Now, throughout the World Cup qualifiers in duos, Mongrel was dominating with Mitro, even qualifying three separate times. But Solos was a completely different story. It seemed like every week, he was just getting worse and worse placements. When the opens of week three Solos, he would pull off one of the most insane clutches in Fortnite history. So that he can continue to just pass down and get through cover, yet to barely to HP. Are you going to do this, Marvel? No way. I don't no. think so. It's a drop in. Gets the shot off and gets the elimination. Mongrel literally putting on a clinic of why you need to pay attention. What to is going this? On. Everybody, are you kidding? Just Bro just killed like three people at once. Picks up three bombs. He's gonna wash that off. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? 13 eliminations. There's still four players left, including him. Daddy down. No way. Are you doing this right now, Margo? No way. Top three situation now. Couldn't get the time for the, for the minis earlier in the lobby. And now reloading double RPG as well. Zoomer's gonna go down in another one. Margo, are you Stop. kidding me? I'm there is no double. way. You no way. Just did that. All right, I see you. Know, bro. Got... Number two, the Zextro Papa Bandage Solo Clutch. This happened during the very first game of the Season X FNCS semifinals, where you needed to place top eight in order to qualify for the grand finals. So clutching up as many points as possible is a must to make it. Trying to not crouch, wants to avoid doing that. Is he able to fight? He gets that one, but he gets sent down. Will he be able to get that something? Papa Bandage! Papa Bandage! Zextro Papa Bandage! Son, please! How? He went down to one HP twice. How? But what makes this clip even better looking back at it is that if he didn't end up clutching, they wouldn't have qualified for the grand finals. If you guys remember, he actually ended up winning that season, becoming the first FNCS grand champions. So technically, that play ended up making his trio $300,000. That shit out of big box. So that's why I had to put the second on the list. The number one clutch in Fortnite history, in my opinion, has to be the final 1v1 in the FNCS Invitationals, with Kami and Vino going head to head to determine the winner. Leading up to this point in the tournament, Kami and Seti were putting on a clinic, showing why they are one of the best duos in the world, even getting four wins throughout the two days of competition. So obviously, because of that, they were at the top of the leaderboard the entire time. But there was just one other duo that was up there with them, and that was Queezy and Vino. They also showed the world why they were so good on height, getting two wins themselves. With both teams being so consistent, they ended up pulling ahead of everyone by over 50 points, which meant there was pretty much no possible way anybody could overtake them. But with Kami and Seti being 12 points ahead of them, they realized coming through with the win would be almost impossible, since Kami and Seti were playing so consistently that entire tournament. So in a last chance attempt, instead of playing out the game and hopefully winning, they decided to take the fight straight to them. Average had that best drop at that time. What is this? What is this? Queasy Vino are trying to take it by force. You only win in one way, and that's taking that crown. Vino is here. Queasy is here. Don't go say it's a big trade. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. This has to be one of the most explosive head-to-head -head we have ever seen. Vino has to get this first here. He knows now it means everything. We might as well. Seal gets deal. Why wait? Shield going out. He's trying to bait it. He's trying to bait the revive so that way Candy might be straight to the wall. Oh, 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 and as we all know, Kami and Seti would end up winning, becoming the first land champion since the World Cup. That is insane. Now this list was just by opinion, and there's some clips that were really insane that I didn't mention. So comment down below what you guys think is the best clutch in competitive Fortnite history. Uh, well, that's, I guess, the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. And those were insane clutches, man. I could not follow them up. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.